So today we're going to be predicting Apple's market cap with TensorFlow. First thing we're going to do is grab some some uh, so this what this here does is just it helps me pull API keys and I can do that without having to show what the actual API key is. Pull some usual suspects. We'll need a scaler and we'll need some metrics. And we're just going to use caras and layers for the TensorFlow bit to build out our model. It's going to be pretty simple. And I was reading up on this uh, little financial modeling prep API. It does come with some pretty interesting data. Um, I was able to pull this for free. I don't know if there's a limit to how many times you can pull it, but it uh, might be worth checking out. Financial modeling prep. Pretty simple JSON request, and we put that into a data frame, and you can see this is what it looks like. There are 61 columns, so there's quite a lot. But you can see there's a lot of really cool, interesting data here. So there's revenue per share, net income per share, uh, free cash flows per share, book value per share, um, days sales outstanding, days payables outstanding, inventory on hand, receivables turnover. So what's interesting about this data is if you've seen another video where we did some prediction or we did some reinforcement learning based on fundamentals. This might be a good place to get fundamentals data for different um, stocks that you're interested in. And it goes by, uh, looks like this is the date here, but you can see it goes by year. But there should be quite a few more rows here than just five years. Obviously, that wouldn't be enough time to actually get anything done. Okay, but we're gonna, we're, our target variable is market cap. And so we're gonna drop some of this other data that had been missing values or weren't numeric or something along those lines that um, we just aren't interested in. And then we scale it and we exclude our market cap variable. And then we also calculate the correlation at the absolute value. And this is what the correlation matrix looks like. It has all of our columns here. And if I scroll over, it gives us all of the different um, correlations for our columns up here as well. Cool. So if you've ever seen like a heat map on any other Python um, tutorial or one of my other videos where sometimes I'll make a heat map based on the correlation of the columns, that's what this is doing, but we just haven't built out the plot. We're going to remove the upper part of the, or excuse me, we're just going to select one of the triangle parts. So we're going to select the upper part of the triangle um, to avoid multicollinearity, multicollinearity, wow, I can't even say it. Um, and then we're just going to find the columns with correlation coefficient greater than 0.8. So we put those columns into a variable here, and then we just drop uh, anything in that list. And we select our market cap, and we put that into a variable as well. So to take a look at our uh, now our data frame with no market cap looks something like this. These are the only, uh, apparently, these are the only columns that fit our structure up here. You can play around with this variable here if you want to um, decrease it or increase it. Um, I just chose this 0.8 because it was part of the blog post that I'm that I read this tutorial from. And I've never used NPTRIU, but uh, it's pretty interesting. It really helps just grab that. Um, you can read here what it does. Cool. So. Um, and then this is what our market cap variable looks like. Um, now we initialize the scaler again, and we're going to scale and fit the two variables that we've just created with the market cap and no market cap. And we grab the values, throw them in there, and then now we split it. And we're doing an 80-20 split. So our training size will be the length of the data frame um, you know, obviously 80% is the training, testing is 20%, and we reshape the data so it matches the input that the model is expecting. And since we're on that subject, let's move on to what the model will look like. 
So really basic model architecture here. I mean, basic. It's not like it's not like AI. Uh, it's not like neural networks are actually simple, ever simple, even even if it's only one or two layers here. Uh, we have a dropout layer to uh, reduce overfitting, and we have a middle layer here of 32. Um, and of course, we have our input and output layers. Uh, and then we can compile it. And I've we've chosen to use um, mean squared error. And the optimizer is Atom. And then we've defined an early stopping callback. So we're going to monitor the value loss. And once we have the best weights, uh, we'll call that true. And we'll stop, stop training. So now we fit it. And we did 100 epochs, batch size of 8, validation split equals uh, you know 20%. And we've stopped. We're doing early stopping, as said up here. Uh, it was super quick, really fast. And then we can pull some metrics. And you can see the validation loss and the training loss. And, but let's go ahead and just go to the predictions here. Um, I don't want to get, it's not really the point of the videos to talk about this. This isn't like the most accurate model in the world, I think. Um, but I found it pretty interesting when I read it. So we're going to then make some predictions. So we grab the latest data, uh, including the target column, if it's not included in the training. Um, great, scale it, reshape it so that it looks like the predicted data. And now we're going to call some predictions. And we get the prediction. And we then scale the inverse transformation of that prediction. And then we print it out. So this prediction for the next year's Apple's market cap will be one trillion point four seven four eight. Um, that's uh, I don't know. Whoops, I don't know. What do you guys think? Is that a good prediction? I think it's not. Um, I'm not sure what Apple's market cap is at the moment. Yeah, so that's uh, it's two trillion. So it's off. It's wrong, um, which is expected. It's a pretty simple model. There's a lot of things wrong with it, and I'm sure people in the comments are gonna go crazy about what I did wrong. But that's not really the point. Uh, I just thought this was an interesting, cool little way of doing um, some predictions. I've taken a break from doing reinforcement learning and thought I'd do some just classic, let's see if I can predict something using neural networks. Um, cool. And this was really good exercise for me just to like get back into ways of, um, you know, I really do need to brush up on these metrics here. Um, I didn't actually write this part of the code um, where you define the compile and the early stopping. Um, but I really like the way that it's laid out here. Um, I haven't used TensorFlow a ton, so this was really a helpful tutorial for me. I thought I'd share it with you. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments. A uh, quick little video, but uh, I think it was worth it. All right, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.